Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back. We just had a little technical glitch, but don't worry, you only missed one second due to the uh, quick movements of Rasika Shiromani, who's the techie taking care of our recording, our broadcasting. Okay, so uh, now we're moving on. Uh, text 13 and 14. When the respective warriors of both camps, namely the Kauravas and the Pandavas, were killed on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and the dead warriors obtained their deserved destinations, and when the son of Dhritarashtra fell down lamenting, his spine broken, being beaten by the club of Bhimasena, the son of Dronacharya, Ashwatthama, beheaded the five sleeping sons of Draupadi, and delivered the heads as a prize to his master, foolishly thinking that he would be pleased. Duryodhana, however, disapproved of the heinous act, and he was not pleased in the least. He thought he was cutting the heads of the Pandavas. Purport. Transcendental topic, but as soon as Duryodhana saw the hands, he said, this is not the Pandavas. You've done a very bad thing. Transcendental topics of the activities of Lord Sri Krishna in the Srimad Bhagavatam begin from the end of the battle at, at Kurukshetra, where the Lord himself spoke about himself in the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, both the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are transcendental topics of Lord Krishna. The Gita is Krishna Katha, or topics of Krishna, because it is spoken by the Lord. And the Bhagavatam is also Krishna Katha, because it is spoken about the Lord. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted everyone to be informed of both Krishna Kathas by his order. Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya is himself, is Krishna himself, in the garb of a devotee of Krishna. And therefore, the versions of both Lord Krishna and Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are identical. Lord Chaitanya desired that all who were born in India seriously understand such Krishna Kathas and then, after full realization, <laughs> preach the transcendental message to everyone in all parts of the world. That will bring about the desired peace and prosperity of the stricken world. Text 15. Draupadi, the mother of the five children of the Pandavas, after hearing of the massacre of her sons, began to cry in distress with eyes full of tears, trying to pacify her, great, pacify her in her great loss. Arjuna spoke to her. Thus, text 16. O gentle lady, when I present you with the head of that Brahmana, after beheading him with arrows from my Gandiva bow, I shall then wipe the tears from your eyes and pacify you. Then, after burning your son's bodies, you can take your bath standing on his head. Purport. An enemy who sets fire to the house administers poison, attacks all of a sudden with deadly weapons, plunders wealth or usurps agricultural fields. Sounds like everything that's going on today right now by the government. Or entices one's wife is called an aggressor. Such an aggressor, though he be, a Brahm, be, though he be, he, though he be a Brahmana or a so-called son of a Brahmana, has to be punished in all circumstances. When, when Arjuna promised to behead the aggressor named Ashwatthama, he knew well that Ashwatthama was the son of a Brahmana, but because the so-called Brahmana acted like a butcher, he was taken as such, and there was no question of sin in killing such a Brahmana's son who proved to be a villain. Text 17. Arjuna who is guided by the infallible Lord as friend 
and drive her, thus satisfied the dear lady by such statements. Then he dressed in armor and armed himself with furious weapons, and getting into his chariot, he set out to follow Ashwatthama, the son of his martial teacher. Text 18. Ashwatthama, the murderer of the princes, seeing from a great distance Arjuna coming at him with great speed, fled in his chariot, panic-stricken, just to save his life, as Brahma fled in fear of Shiva. Purport. According to the reading matter, either Kaha or Arkaha, there are two references in the Puranas. Kaha means Brahma, who once became allured by his daughter and began to follow her, which infuriated Shiva, who attacked Brahma with his trident. Brahmaji fled in fear of his life. As far as Arka is concerned, there is a reference in the Vamana Purana. There was a demon named, of the name Vidyun Mali, who was gifted with a glowing golden air, who was gifted by a, but with a glow, I'll read that again. As far as Arka is concerned, there is a reference in the Vamana Purana. There was a demon by the name Vinyun Mali, who was gifted with a glowing golden airplane, which traveled to the back of the sun, and night disappeared because of the glowing effulgence of this plane. Thus the sun god became angry, and with his virulent weapon rays, he melted the plane. <laughs> thus, enra thus enraged Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva then attacked the sun god who fled away and at last fell down at Kashi, Varnishi, and the place became famous as Olarka. Text 19. The, Brahm, the Puranas are filled with stories, historical events that happened in the history of the universe since the beginning. Some of them sound very fantastic and because now we don't have the capacity to do any of those kinds of things. So we just take it as myth or, you know, stories or something. But these are, this is a historical document. Every single thing that happened, it, it happened to history, is history of the universe. When the son of, Abraham, of the Brahmana, Ashwatthama, saw that his horses were tired, he considered that there was no alternative for protection outside of his using the ultimate weapon, the Brahmastra, nuclear weapon. Purport. In the ultimate issue only, when there is no alternative, the nuclear weapon called the Brahmastra is applied. The word Dvijatmaja is significant here because Ashwatthama, although the son of Dronacharya, was not exactly a qualified Brahmana. The most intelligent man is called the Brahmana and it is not a, her a hereditary title. Ashwatthama was also formally called the Brahmabandhu or the friend of a Brahmana. Being a friend of a Brahmana does not mean that one is a Brahmana by qualification. A friend or son of a Brahmana, when fully qualified, can be called a Brahmana and not otherwise. Since Ashwatthama's decision is immature, he is purposefully called herein the son of a Brahmana. Text 20. Since his life was in danger, he touched water and sanctity and concentrated upon the chanting of the hymns for, the throwing, for throwing nuclear weapons, although he did not know how to withdraw such weapons. Oops. Purport. The subtle forms of material activities are finer than grosser methods of material manipulation. Such subtle forms of material activities are effected through purification of sound. The same method is adopted here by chanting hymns to act as nuclear weapons. Text 21. Thereupon a glaring light spread in all directions. It was so fierce that Arjuna thought his own life in danger and so he began to address Lord Sri Krishna. And we will stop there for tonight. Ah, you got to come back tomorrow night, don't you, to find out what's going to happen. <laughs> of course, you can always read ahead, but it's not the same. Hare Krishna. So now we have what is called reflection. So if there's anything that was 
stuck out in your mind, you know, that you want to hear more about or want a, more explanation or if you have a question or, or a realization that you had, inspiration that you had from any of it that you want to share with us, please feel free. Wow, simultaneous. We got two hands coming up simultaneously. I think I'd see them two at the same time because one was there. You're in the same line of sight. One's going to defer to the other. It was a, it was a, what do they call that? A photo finish? Yeah, photo finish. Thank you, Maharaj, for reading this evening. As always, it's, uh, um, well, you know what they say. Describe. You know what they say. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a question about something from uh, one of the purports. Uh, this is verse. Uh, this was the one where all the words were described. Yeah. That's the Atmarama, the famous Atmarama verse. So near the end, Sri Prabhupada says, the word Hari conveys various meanings, but the chief import of the word is that he, the Lord, vanquishes everything inauspicious and takes away the mind of the devotee by awarding pure transcendental love. Hmm. Well, you haven't heard of this before? Well, haven't you ever haven't you heard of becoming head over heels in love? Yes. And and haven't you heard about somebody who lost their mind because of it? Yes. This is the transcendental application. This is what love real love, intense love of God does. It, it Krishna steals your mind and you have to go running looking for it. And the only way you, place you can find it is where Krishna is. So you just go wherever Krishna is. Therefore, he's called Hari. So and in doing that, and in doing that, one loses a taste for anything except Krishna, for Krishna, because he, he's so much trying to get his mind back from Krishna that he just goes only where Krishna could possibly be. And you know, Krishna couldn't possibly be in certain places doing certain things. So automatically, he stops doing certain things that keeps him away from Krishna. And in this way, he's Hari, he takes away all inauspicious things. So that, this doesn't mean he, he takes away the ability to, to reason? He takes away the ability to reason in the sense that we, we reason that there's anything in this material world that's any, of any value. Yes. Yadu Yadutama Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Um, I feel like this, this whole section also is kind of answers my question. Um, at the very beginning, you, you spoke that faith equals reliability over time. I didn't say it equals, I said. It comes from. Direct, direct from. Yes. Um, It's not exactly that it's derived from either. You're, you're, you're a very subtle, intelligent, you're like a jnani. But, you know, uh, re reliability over time breeds faith, which means it results in faith. It's not the same of faith, because the faith is in another person. The reliability is in you, and the faith is in another person. So re reliability over time breeds faith that another person has in you. Wait, where do we, you know, somebody has little... It's like Krishna. He's so reliable. Every time he comes, he does these most incredible things. And he does, everything that he does is just extraordinary. And some of the things he does, no one else could do. <laughs> and in that way, reliably doing that, uh, he gets our faith. Our faith comes out. And so the same way, 
that if we are reliably uh, looking for Krishna and becoming attracted to hearing about Krishna and acting like Krishna wants us to act, then his faith in us is increased. And when both those faiths come to a certain level of pitch, then Krishna reveals himself. And there's no other way to get Krishna, period. Is that something that's... I thought so. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, Selik, Bhakti Selik. Korvanti? Korvanti, could you speak about that more? R remind me? It was um, to do with for the pleasure of someone else, not for your own benefit. Oh, yes, yes. And so I was thinking in the context of Krishna consciousness and... Well, it's the difference between... Is this one out? It looks like it's out. It's the difference between love and lust. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the difference between love and lust is described. It's like the difference between Jai Hare Krishna, Shishi Gonitai Ki Jai, Shishi Radha Govinda Ki Jai, Giriraj Govardhan Ki Jai, Jagannath Paladev Shimati Subhadra Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo, thank you, thank you, thank you. Talking about reliability over time. When did they, when were they installed? Somebody knows? Yeah, before anybody was here, you know, before any of us were here, they were here. That's reliability over time. They never go anywhere. And they stay there and they're still smiling and still effulgent and still capable of responding to your loving service. Therefore, they're really easy to love. That's Kurvanti. Sometimes less intelligent persons think that darshan means you go and give your you know, darshan to the Lord but actually you're going in order to get the darshan of the Lord the, the, the vision, the sight to, so that the Lord can see you not that you just go and see him what do you have to offer <laughs> in your glance but his glance is capable of giving everything he's capable of doing anything in any one of his senses Unlimitedly. Hare Krishna. Can you explain uh yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'll repeat it, I'll repeat it. Can you explain this is Bhakta Matt, the new the newest uh, devotee in the block. Is there a Nirgranta? Nirgranta. I thought like there was like a lot of different definitions for the word Yeah. Well, what it, well, it's not something that we can grasp right away. It takes a long time to be able to... In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it's, uh, what's the word, developed in uh, many, many, many verses. Uh, what it means is that the Sanskrit language, uh, there's many meanings for the same word. It's not like a dull language like English. You know, and there's specific ways to say the words, and you can't, you know, like in English, you can say, uh, I can't, can't even think of an example offhand. There's different ways where you can say the same combination of letters, you know, and it means a different thing. But Sanskrit's not like that. There's only 
one combination of letters that you can say in the word, but there are different meanings of the words in context. So the Atmarama verse means that uh, Krishna is being described from many, many angles of vision, many d angles of understanding. That's basically what it means. So it starts off giving Atma, the Atma Rama. Atma means soul, it can mean body, it can mean so many things like that. It's just an analysis and uh, to give us faith and to give us, uh, to stimulate our interest and to our intelligence, to stimulate our, our, our spiritual intelligence. We were talking the other day, don't mind, I'm, I don't want to embarrass you, but we were talking the other day about different spiritual sojourns that we had gone through in, in our lives before we came to Christian consciousness. And we had a lot of similar kind of experiences that it only took, could take us to a certain stage. And then we ask a question and there was no answer there. And the persons who were supposed to be the authorities just didn't give any answer, there weren't any answers. But here, whatever question you ask, as deep as you want to ask, there's an answer. But it requires uh, our own intelligence to be awakened and it's something that's done gradually by hearing progressively, you know, the verses. And I think if you go to the first, go to the, first, the preface, very beginning of the book, the preface. Did somebody? Yeah, because I have the microphone, I'll read it. I was going to have you read it, but I'll, I'll read it. Srimad mm. Bhagavatam begins with the definition of the ultimate source. It is a bona fide commentary on the Vedanta Sutra by the same author, Srila Vyasadeva, and gradually it develops into nine cantos up to the highest state of God realization. The only qualification one needs to study this great book of transcendental knowledge is to proceed step by step cautiously and not jump forward haphazardly as with an ordinary book. It should be gone through chapter by chapter, one after another. The, the reading matter is arranged, is so arranged with its original Sanskrit text, its English transliteration, synonyms, translation and purports, so that one is sure to become a God-realized soul at the end of finishing in the first nine cantos. The tenth canto is distinct from the first nine cantos because it deals directly with the transcendental activities of the Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. One will be unable to capture the effects of the tenth canto without going through the first nine cantos. The book is complete in twelve cantos, each independent, but it is good for all to read them in small installments one after another. So in the process of doing that, you come up with so many explanations and so many ideas and they gradually expand the consciousness. Once consciousness is expanded, one's intelligence is expanded, so that at, by the time you get to the tenth canto, you understand very well who is God and what his potencies are and what his capabilities are and just how unlimited a personality he is. And therefore, when you get to the tenth canto, which is the, we mentioned before, is the smiling face of the Lord, where the most intimate pastimes are, the most confidential, spontaneous love of him and his liberated associates in the spiritual world are described, then we won't make the mistake of thinking he's just an ordinary boy being with an ordinary girl, Radha and Krishna. Yeah, just before we, we cut off, I was describing gold and iron. You know, love is gold, lust is iron. They're both metals, but one is completely different in quality than the other. So love means 
for the pleasure of the other person without any desire for any pleasure for myself. And, and the, the closest thing to it is mother and child. Because the mother is put into a position where she's forced, if she's real, if she's really a mother, if she's not just some kind of animal pretending to be a human, right? Then there's unconditional care. When the baby first comes out, it's completely dependent on the mother. Completely, even for the food from the breast of the mother. And every second there has to be attention and care. You know, so that love is unconditional. So that's the closest thing Prabhupada said to uh, love of God in this world. Except for one who actually has love of God in this world. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Something. It's, it's meant to, it's meant, the details are meant to stimulate, you know, expand and stimulate our and as you go step by step, step by step, through the Gita, then to the Bhagavatam, then to the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you'll see the full explanation of that verse and his ex the Lord Chaitanya's explanation, not just to Sanatana Goswami, but also to uh, Prakashananda Saraswati Thakur and Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, and they're all a little different, and there's even more explanations. He, he did more explanations than a human being can do, and then he did more, and then he did more to show that he's not an ordinary person. And he converted people who were hardcore Maya bodies, who were impossible to change. And all their followers all at once. He would liberate 30,000 people at once, 60,000 people at once. That's Krishna. That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we want to become uh, instruments. We, we can't imitate that, but we might find one person, or two, or, or 20, or even if you're really good, you know, a thousand. Of course, we do have some empowered preachers in our movement now. 10,000 isn't so out of the question. But all at once, in one setting, no. No one can do that. Krishna married 16,000 queens. Who can support 16,000 women now? With, with, with 16,000 separate households. All top of the line. Hari Bo, Hari Krishna. Shri 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 Radha Govinda Kinja. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Jo Jagannath Paladei Simai Subhadra Kite. So, you know, the, 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 if you hear the Bhagavatam, the Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, all the way through, and then connected by a spiritual master and learn how to apply it, then you get capabilities of understanding God and pleasing God and pleasing others that are beyond this material world. And even if we can only get a drop of it, you know, it's enough. Okay, that's it, eight o'clock. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Sri Vyasadeva ki jai. Sri Narada Muni ki jai. Arjuna ki jai. Ashwatthama bu. Yes. Okay. His Holiness Keshavaparati Das Goswami Maharaj ki.